for joining us tonight. I'm Kate Levitt, Director of Mission at Seacoast Science Center. You are here tonight because you love SSC. You love what we do, what we stand for, and you understand the very important role we play in our community. We are here tonight to celebrate the wave makers, the ocean lovers, the advocates, center supporters, student change agents and innovators, our volunteers, donors, teachers, teen fellows, campers and our little trekkers, our unbelievable staff and board and dearest community members and friends. You have all helped us make it through this stunning year and tonight we want to thank you. Tonight you will get a glimpse of what your support has helped us to accomplish and get some peeks into the future of SSC, including coastal and ocean conservation coalition building, environmental education, nature-based learning, and the very special type of communi community building that happens here in Odium Point State Park. So thank you for tuning in and being here. I am so happy to introduce your host for this evening, SECO Science Center President, Jim Chase. Thank you very much, Kate. I look forward to seeing you a little later in the evening. Welcome, welcome everybody, and thanks for joining us. I know that you're all supporters of the SECO Science Center because you've taken the time out of your busy schedules to join us here tonight, and we plan to celebrate you for that. Tonight will be a little fun, a little entertaining, but mostly we're hoping that we can inspire you. Tonight we are here to raise funds to benefit the Seacoast Science Center. Our team has been incredibly hard at work supporting the Seacoast community through this pandemic. And now we're asking for your help and your donations to make sure we can have a solid foundation for 2021. Right up front, I need to thank some of your neighbors and friends for their generosity. A group of folks has gotten together and agreed to match the monies we raise here tonight, dollar for dollar, to $50,000. That means we have a target of $100,000 tonight, and I know we can get there. Thanks to your support, I have faith. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna beat that barrier tonight. Before we begin, I have to do a little housekeeping. Normally, someone like me or I would stand in front of a group and say, okay, buffet is over here, the bar is in the back, the restroom's down the hall. But tonight's a little different. We have a virtual event, so the housekeeping is a little different. If you haven't already, please sign in at the web address at the bottom of your screen. That'll give you access to all of tonight's, all aspects of tonight's event the fund to need, the auction, and there's some other things that we may reference later on that will be important for you to be able to look up. Again, this is social media driven tonight, so I encourage you to take photographs. Take photographs of you and your party mates. Use the hashtag, want to get it right, making waves for SSC and upload it to your social media. We'll be looking at that over the course of the evening and we'll bring some of your, some of your photographs in a little later in the, in, in the night. Also, because it's social media based, we'll be recording your comments. So as you're looking at YouTube Live, make comments in, into, the, into the comments section. We'll also be pulling those and looking at them a little later this evening. And as a prompt to get started, why don't you share with us your first connection, your first contact with the SECO Science Center? The first thing that made you take notice and recognize what an asset the Science Center can be for the Seacoast community. And it's not too late to invite your friends. Text them, ping them, whatever you need to do. Invite them to tune in to check out the Science Center and check out the good work that we do. This is the world of COVID. And tonight, you'll be seeing us sometimes without masks, sometimes we will be wearing masks. Just to give you a sense, we're here in the big space of the Science Center. We have flow through ventilation and when we are spaced out and not in close proximity, we'll try not to wear masks. However, later in the evening, we're gonna be doing interviews and we'll be a little closer together and you'll see us wearing masks in order to maintain uh, a high level of safety and as much uh, maintain a, a co safe COVID protocol. We trust that the microphones will do their work, but we'll make every effort to speak clearly and enunciate through our masks. 
Well, now I'd like to set the stage for the evening. And I'd like to set the stage with two stories that I think really capture the essence of SECO Science Center. One is a tribute from our friends at Storm Warriors, and the other is a testimonial from my dear friend and SECO Science Center board member, Susan Labrie. And as you hear these stories, I ask you to please consider what you can give to support the SECO Science Center as we move forward into 2021. So now, I'd like to share a glimpse of the SECO Science Center with you through the eyes of storm warriors. It's a busy world, and I think that we can think about conservation and climate and stewardship and intellectualize them on the one hand and leave them for the next guy on the other. And I don't know that we have that latitude anymore. It's serious. And I think that we have the opportunity and have exercised the opportunity to touch some lives. The mission is to spark curiosity, enhance understanding, and inspire conservation of our blue planet. We try very hard to leverage this fabulous location here in Odierne Point State Park to help bring people's focus to the ocean and topics of its conservation and the necessity of being good stewards of this valuable resource that we have. Our end goal is to help people understand how the small actions they take every day impacts ocean health and how ocean health impacts their daily lives. So what we want them to walk away with are ideas of the steps they can take to help make a difference. And we want them to understand that there's no step too small. It's our goal to provide inspiring and motivational experiences that can shift someone's attitudes or behaviors or thinking, possibly even shift their professional or learning trajectory. The reality is there was one Rachel Carson and one E.O. Wilson and you know one Sylvia Earle, all these famous oceanographers and, and conservationists and ecologists. But sometimes it only takes one. We've had interns and campers that are now earning PhDs on research vessels in places all around the world. There's a thirst, there's a willingness, and there's a need. It's pretty cool to be part of that. Hi, Susan Labrie. I just want you to take a minute to consider this. What if we didn't appreciate and protect our oceans? What if we didn't educate ourselves, our families, our communities about the value the ocean brings? What if we didn't respect the magnificence of our ocean? We take things for granted, like clean water, fresh fish, a stormy day where the waves crash over the shale piles onto the road. These things fuel our soul and create a positive energy that inspires curiosity. What do we turn to for lessons on conservation, on the wildlife abundant along our shores, the fish, the mammals, the plants living in the ocean? Seacoast Science Center, a gem providing education, activities, sparking curiosity, and enriching our lives. Take a minute and consider this. Your support not only feeds our animals at the center, and helps educate both children and adults, but protects our natural resource that surrounds us with positive energy, which is something we desperately need right now. Please consider supporting Seco Science Center to show your support of our home. Thank you. Wow, this is amazing. On my way down here to the Restoring Reefs exhibit, they handed me a list of some donations that have come in already. Thank you so much. I want to make a special thanks to Francis in Seekonk and Chris from Hampton, Ed and Teresa in Dover, 
and Robert and Susan from Portsmouth. You're some of the first people on the board tonight, and I thank you so much for your generosity, and I thank you so much for, for coming out tonight to support the Science Center. A few weeks ago, I went into the local hardware store. I put my purchase on the counter. The clerk ran me, rang me up and he said, that'll be 2020. I looked at him and I said, please, can I give you 2021 or 2022? I am so done with 2020. And he looked at me kind of blankly like it wasn't really very funny and I, and I guess I missed my mark, but I really meant it. I felt like I was done with 2020. Needless to say, this pandemic has hit us all hard our families, our businesses. The SECO Science Center is no different. And I'm, I'm kind of fond of saying we're all in different boats in the same storm about now. Well, the emergency orders came out March 13th, March 12th this year, and the SECO Science Center closed on March 14th. We were thinking two weeks, four weeks, but two weeks and four weeks turned into months. Normally in the spring of the year, we're getting ready to host 90,000 visitors, including 25,000 school kids in our, in our on-site field trip programs. Well, this year we saw exactly zero kids for zero programs. We could no longer swing our doors open to the public, and we were forced to cancel all of our community events for the summer, Sipping for Seals, the Music by the Sea concert series. Somehow, though, the Science Center never missed a beat. Shortly after closing, we realized that families and teachers needed new ways to teach, that parents needed safe places and safe experiences for their kids, and people generally needed places like the Seco Science Center and Odeon Point State Park as a place for some respite and refuge. I'm incredibly proud of what our team did then. We heard what the community was needing, and we knew we could help. In fact, we knew we had to help. We quickly created a series of online programs, online educational programs for families and teachers. And thanks to a generous grant from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch Portsmouth, we were able to offer those programs free of charge. We figured out ways to run our summer camps in safely and in ways consistent with the COVID protocols advanced by the state, Department of Health and Human Services. Working with our museum colleagues across New England, we figured out safe ways to reopen for visitors, and we did. We reopened for visitors on weekends starting July 4th. We were back to serving the community, and frankly, it felt great. But even with all that success, the pandemic had still had a significant financial impact on the Science Center. Overall, we saw about an $800,000 reduction to our normal revenue. That's about 45%. Fortunately, we were able to make up about 300, a little over $300,000, thanks to some federal support that was available to us. And we also received about $100,000 of grants and donations from people that came out in the community to support us at the onset of the pandemic. Still, we needed to make significant cuts to keep financially balanced. But we did so, so that we'd be in a solid position to take advantage of whatever opportunities came our way in 2021. I wanna share two more stories with you. They're stories told by two of Seco Science Center's own wave makers, Kate Levitt and Henry Burke. Kate and Henry were instrumental in our education pivot and opening our camp programs. I'll let you tell it about, I'll let them tell you about it in their own words. But again, as you're watching these pieces, think about what kind of donation you can make to help support these great programs at the Seco Science Center. Here's Kate. We've all felt the shrinking of our worlds due to COVID. Reductions in opportunities to socialize, attend school and community events have all taken their toll on us emotionally. I would argue that none have felt or borne the impacts of these losses more than our youth. As you well know, these group experiences are not just fun, healthy, and motivating. They're critical and formative parts of children's social-emotional development 
and our experiences that helped to shape us. At the same time as we were necessarily physically distancing, students' days were increasingly taking place online in front of a screen and navigating new remote learning protocols. At SSC, we felt our direction was clear. Families and children needed nature and community more than ever. Faced with the challenges of the pandemic, our team quickly shifted gears and completely re-envisioned the ways that we engage with our students, campers, families, and community. As you know, at SSC, we excel at a very specific kind of outdoor education, one that involves nature-based learning, hands-on exploration of coastal habitats, STEM and inquiry-based teaching approaches, and fun. When the center shut down, our team made a strategic choice to shift our mode of engagement from something that had always been reliant on person-to-person -person connection to something that could help bring some joy to families by bringing our fun, naturalist-created videos and activities right to your inboxes at home. Within eight days, your learning connection was born. As you might recall, stress and uncertainty were high and parents were seeking creative ways to infuse nature and inquiry into their new homebound routines. I couldn't be more proud to share with you the resources, videos, and products our team has created and show you how to access these nationally recognized free resources that you can use anytime and share with your friends, family, and teachers. To find online resources for young learners and families, navigate to the Seacoast Science Center website, click on the drop down menu and navigate to explore and learn. And here you will find your learning connection. Your learning connection is packed with the Seco Science Center created and selected lessons that we think are just right for engaging your children and friends in local science and nature investigations. In the absence of large outdoor group programs, our team has also created some new outdoor adventure guides for Odeo and Point State Park. Whether you're looking to explore the tide pools, learn about some of the rich park history, or enjoy some natural history with habitat hunts and scavenger hunts, all of these guides are free and easily accessible to print or view directly on your phone. Teacher Learning Connection or TLC boards are arranged by topic and are comprehensive lessons and assessments that highlight the New Hampshire coastal environment while addressing a, a selection of cross-cutting concepts science and engineering practices, and literacy skills. Finally, if you're looking for additional resources for a group of students, you might be interested in our newly updated virtual field trip programs. These are found in our educator section under virtual field trips. We look forward to transitioning back to in-person learning here at Seco Science Center and Odium Point State Park. But until then, we're committed to helping teachers, families, and our community investigate science and nature safely in fun, creative ways that deepen our connections to our blue planet. We had a very important decision to make this summer about whether we could run our summer camp. And it was a difficult decision. Could we run the camp during a pandemic? So after careful consideration with our team, we came to the conclusion that given our unique location on the New Hampshire coastline and over 300 acres of state forest for the kids to explore in, and a large outdoor tent open to the sea breeze, that we could in fact run it, and we could run it safely. And we did. We were COVID free for the summer. We understood the value of children interacting with each other, being together with their peers and having fun during this stressful time. We also understood the value of children being outside in the fresh air, connecting to nature and making new discoveries about the natural world. We spent several weeks creating a safety protocol based on CDC guidelines and guidance from the New Hampshire governor's office. We trained our camp staff extensively in these safety measures, and we purchased the necessary health supplies, including thermometers, masks, and hand sanitizer. Over the summer, the CDC guidelines changed and we modified our safety protocol to align with the most current practices. We were transparent with camp families about any health issues that arose, 
and we listened to their concerns. Over 400 campers and high school students stayed safe and thrived at SSC camp, connecting with old friends, making new friends, and learning about nature in a hands-on and personal way. They dipped their feet in the tide pools, looked crabs in the eye, and ran from the rain. We learned the value of working and playing together during this difficult time. We had a blast and stayed safe doing so. My name is Caroline Schoons, and we've been taking our children to Seaco Science Center since our seven-year-old was a baby. We live in Portsmouth, and we consider ourselves very lucky to have such an amazing facility so close to home. From regular visits and special events to summer and winter vacation camps, there's hardly a month that goes by that we don't go to Seaco Science Center. This year it has been especially important to our family that we've had a familiar space with excellent safety protocols to send our children. They really enjoyed themselves during summer camp and more recently we have been using camp care to help support remote learning as my husband and I are not home during the day. I can't thank the staff and volunteers enough for the role that Seco Science Center has played and continues to play in our lives. My name is Alice Schongold. I am seven years old and I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I love the Seco Science Center because I get to learn about how I can help the ocean, our oceans. And I make many friends there and I have a lot of fun. Teddy, what's your favorite part of Seco Science Center? Um, I like playing the ocean. I like to find animals and I also like to in the classroom, and I just love the Design Center. Bye! Hi there, everyone. Centrus Digital is so, so pleased to sponsor this Making Waves virtual fundraising event on behalf of the Seacoast Science Center. We have had uh, a very valued partnership over the past three years managing um, the center's Google advertising grant, driving awareness of the amazing programs that they have, the educational programs that they have, and more recently, the virtual programs that they have. Uh, and that grant has been super useful in expanding the reach of those programs nationwide now that they can be taken virtually. So we're very proud of that work and we're very proud of what the Seco Science Center does. Uh, I, not just a sponsor, but I'm also a client. I sent my daughter to the amazing summer programs at Seco Science Center this past year. Uh, they were safe. Um, the COVID protocols were amazing. And my daughter has been to quite a few camps, um, but this one at the Seco Science Center was her favorite. She came home inspired to do science experiments and make messes in the kitchen, which thanks for that, guys. Um, but she had an amazing experience and um, we're just so grateful to have a gem like the Seco Science Center uh, available to us in Portsmouth, and we're so proud to help sponsor this event. So join us in pledging your support and your hard-earned money to a worthy cause. Thank you. Wow, I've seen those pieces a number of times, and every time I come away with the feeling that I'm so fortunate to work with a team of people that feel they can pretty much accomplish anything they want when they put their minds to it. I think that's the, the driving force behind that program work the team has done so far this year. Before we go much further along, I want to add a few reminders to folks at this point. I'd like to remind you that we have a team of volunteers standing by for your calls. Uh, I believe we're using the main number, which is 603-436-8043. The volunteers will pick up the phones and process your donations. I also want to remind you that we have our auction running. There's a lot of great items in there. Um, we have a behind-the-scenes tour of Jimmy's on Congress Street. That's the jazz blues club that our friends uh, Michael and Peter Labrie are putting in in the old YMCA building. Be a great opportunity to get behind the scenes with them and, and see their work as it's progressing. We have soap refill for a year from We Feel Good in Kittery. We Feel Good is a housewares shop that focuses on sustainability and sustainable products so that we can all have a little smaller footprint on the world. 
You can bid on beautiful nature photography, some great photos by our own in-house nature photographer, Ron Watson. Ron's very talented and he's been kind enough to offer some of his art to our auction. We also have a tour of the Wood Island Life Saving Station offered up by Seco Science Center friend Sam Reed and uh, the Wood Island Life Saving Station Association, Wilsa. Uh, Sam, I've taken the trip with Sam on a few occasions. It's wonderful. It's really worth the time. So please bid these items up. There's no reason to be outbid. Just don't stand for it. Keep your bids going and, and make sure that you get what you'd, like to have, what you'd like to win. I do have a few more stories I'd like to share with you tonight. The next stories feature some of the stars of the Seco Science Center, really quite literally, sea stars. You know, when many people think about the Seco Science Center, you think about kids and then usually animals, and, and, and lately, seals are marine mammals. I'll let Darren and Brian tell you in their own words how the Seco Science Center's animals and our marine mammal rescue program have risen to meet the challenges of the pandemic. But again, I ask, as you watch these stories, please consider how you can donate to support the Seco Science Center as we move forward into 2021. So make your donation, and in the meantime, we'll check in with Darren. Although the COVID-19 pandemic has brought many changes to our daily routines, one thing that has not changed here at the Seco Science Center is our high quality care of our live animals. Throughout the stay at home order, and still today, our queries ensure that our fish are fed, our systems are well maintained, and that our animal ambassadors are receiving the enrichment that they need to thrive. During the past several months, our Aquarius team has also been working on special projects behind the scenes. They successfully reared baby octopuses hatched from eggs at the center for the very first time. Be sure to look for the juveniles on display in our Gulf of Maine exhibit hall next time you visit. Our team is also continuing to grow coral by using a technique called fragging which was developed to successfully restore coral in our ocean. In this process, a small piece of a reef building specimen is taken and grown. The new sustainably sourced corals will be added to the beautiful tanks in our Restoring Reefs exhibit. At the Seco Science Center, nothing sparks wonder and curiosity more than our live animals. From the wide-eyed child who is so excited to find Nemo in our clownfish tank, to the grandparents who have an aha moment when they learn how a sea star eats. Each connection is another building block to gaining a deeper understanding and appreciation of our natural world. That wonder and curiosity opens the door for us to engage people in important conversations about biodiversity, healthy ecosystems, conservation, and so much more. Our live animals are also central in many of our youth and school programs engaging students in learning about marine and environmental sciences in ways that are exciting and memorable. Time and time again, we hear stories from people who tell us how their experience at the Seco Science Center has influenced their life. For some, it's even changed their course of study or career path. When I was little, I remember visiting the Seco Science Center with my family, walking through the front doors and seeing the giant whale hanging from the ceiling the touch tank full of discoveries, and the blue lobster that left me wondering what other colorful creatures roamed the ocean floor. Growing up on the seacoast, visiting SSC for a school field trip, attending camp, or visiting with your family was something almost everyone has in common. I often think about that little girl who was filled with inspiration and drive for learning more about marine life and see myself now, working in this field and striving to make those same moments that I experienced happen for every visitor who walks through our doors. Our naturalists are always ready to help you discover the fascinating creatures of our coast. We believe by fostering a personal connection to nature and by helping you understand the importance of a healthy and biodiverse ecosystem, that you will be inspired to protect our environment and our blue planet. What does conservation in action look like? It's scientists, educators, and community members working together to protect wildlife 
that was once nearly wiped out from New England's waters. At the Seacoast Science Center, you can find such a cast of folks who have joined forces to take on the task of conserving seals, whales, dolphins, and porpoises in the Gulf of Maine, our marine mammal rescue team. Marine mammals in New England have historically faced threats from mankind's growing presence at sea. And today, those threats take on modern forms. We see seals facing new diseases, interacting with marine debris in our waters, and becoming harassed by large crowds. The Gulf of Maine is changing faster than 99% of our planet's oceans, and we need to invest in achieving a greater understanding of the marine mammal species that live here, who are true sentinels of their natural environment. That's why our work is so important. Not only do we give sick and injured animals the humane care they deserve, but we collect valuable data that helps us to understand this fast-changing environment. In 2020 alone, Marine Mammal Rescue has responded to 33 harbor seals, 19 gray seals, 18 harp seals, one hooded seal, and three porpoises along the seacoasts of New Hampshire and Northern Massachusetts. Even in the face of a global pandemic, our dedicated team has persisted and continues to respond as a leader in marine conservation and education in this region. But our work doesn't end at the beach. Our team works simultaneously to educate the public about marine conservation and the work that we do, igniting a curiosity and understanding of these animals. And this year, we've gone virtual, hosting webinars, virtual learning opportunities, and fun community events. One of the greatest takeaways we've learned this year is that without the help of our local community, we absolutely would not be able to conserve marine mammals. We rely on our community to act as our eyes on the beach and to help us educate new audiences about the need to protect these iconic species. 2020 has brought about challenges that our marine mammal rescue team has never seen before. Yet we've managed to stay as resilient as the marine mammals we're working to protect. Seacoast Science Center's marine mammal rescue effort is a community funded program. There's very little federal and almost no state support available. This means we need donations from concerned community members like you to keep the program operating. We're counting on your help to make our rescue and education efforts possible. I think what we've seen here tonight is the essence of the Seaco Science Center. But up till now, we've talked a lot about, a lot about us. Tonight is really about you. We're not here for us. We're here to celebrate you, the wave makers, the people who have helped shape the last 28 years of this institution, and I hope and trust will help us to shape the next 28 years. You've rolled up your sleeves, you've advocated on our behalf, you've shared us with your families, you've given us encouragement when we've needed it. Together, I think we recognize the value and the importance of education and conservation. And I think that's, that's, that that is the shared bond that connects Seco Science Center and the Seco Science Center wave makers. It's that shared bond and understanding of the value of education and conservation and that we need to advance those things together in unison in our Seacoast community. Now I'd like to introduce a couple of our special wave makers. Julie and Bill Kath. Julie and Bill came to me a few weeks ago with a unique way to leverage their OSIN ambassador contribution for 2021 and beyond. I'll let them tell you about their strategy in their own words. But if you want to find out more about our OSIN ambassador program, you can find that at the web address at the bottom of the screen that you'll see over the course of the evening at the at the uh, WaveMakers webpage. In a nutshell, our ocean ambassadors are folks who contribute $1,000 a year to the Seaco Science Center. And for that group, in an effort to create a, group, a community of ocean ambassadors, we offer a series of events and activities that gives that group access to our professional network of educators and scientists and conservationists. We hope that you have the chance 
and the means you consider joining us in the Ocean Ambassadors. But for now, let's hear from the cats. Hi, I'm Julie Cat. And I'm Bill Cat. And we're seated here you know, on the porch of the Sugden House, looking out at the Gulf of Maine, and it's beautiful. We wanted to mention to you something that occurred to us about a month ago. I was looking at all of my cards and saying, we got to update our memberships. I pulled out the membership card for Seaco Science Center and said, oh, we're ambassadors. I hadn't realized that. And it doesn't expire until May of 2022. We got to thinking about how to help and make sure that the Seaco Science Center got through the cash problems of this year. We said, hey, maybe we could have an eight-year membership. And was that possible? Eight-year membership would be 1,000 times eight plus the annual fees of 250 a year, 10,000 would work. And we asked and they said, we think we could do that. And so we agreed. And so we're optimists. We think we're gonna be here eight years from now or 10 years from now and still be ocean ambassadors. Thanks. Thanks, Julie and Bill. And thank you not only for your generosity, but for your creativity. I think you've probably inspired others to come up with creative ways to support the Seaco Science Center. You can always call us. We have a bunch of creative ways to support the Science Center up our sleeves. But I will say that if you've seen something tonight that inspires you, give us a call and we will figure out a way to make sure that your contribution and your donations match your inspiration. On my way over to this station, they've handed me a few more thank yous from some of our from of our wave makers who've made contributions so far tonight and I, it, it's it's exciting and humbling to see this coming through i'd like to thank pam from north andover wendy from berwick our friends paul and lucy from kittery and matthew from baltimore we've received a contribution from claire in danville and kathleen in portsmouth burton alice in barrington and Ginger from Durham. Thank you all. Thanks all for watching tonight. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for extending your generosity, your donations in support of the Seaco Science Center. You know, the center is fortunate to have a long legacy of wave makers. And in the spirit of the evening, we've created a short tribute to them, really to you, a testament to your contribution to making the Seaco Science Center what it is and what it has become over the years. I want to extend my personal thanks to all of our wave, maker, wave makers, past, present, and future. And now, let's take a look into the history of the wave makers at the Seco Science Center. Seco Science Center's evolution from a one-room seasonal nature center to a thriving year-round museum and education institution is a shining example of what an engaged community can accomplish with a clear vision, many broad shoulders to share the hard work, a suite of valued partnerships, and a genuine love of place. You are that engaged community. You are the wave makers that make Seco Science Center possible. In 1989, a group of UNH Marine docents, along with a few conservation-minded Seacoast residents, crafted the vision for what would become Seacoast Science Center. These wave makers created partnerships, raised funds, and in a wonderful example of a collaborative public-private partnership, built Seacoast Science Center. In the 28 years since the ribbon of kelp was first cut, Seacoast Science Center opened its doors to an estimated one and a half million visitors. SSE strives to inspire each visitor to join that ever-expanding circle of wave makers who take action in their daily lives to help restore and sustain healthy coastal and ocean ecosystems. Wave makers are drawn to Seaco Science Center for many reasons. Some are attracted to the serenity of our beautiful location in Odeon Point State Park. Others come to introduce their children to the wonders of nature. Still, others look to Seaco Science Center for a deeper understanding of how they can be better stewards of our environment. You are all wave makers. 
Many of you have helped to chart the course of Seacoast Science Center since its humble beginnings. SSC exists today because of your vision, your hard work, and your generosity. Because of you, Seco Science Center is a cornerstone cultural institution and educational asset for New Hampshire. Wavemakers of volunteers, you are the heart and soul of the organization, teaching programs, supporting visitors, helping to make SSC's grounds beautiful and events possible. Thank you for your loyalty and commitment. Wavemakers are donors. You understand the important asset Seco Science Center is to the community. Your continued investment has created engaging exhibits and made it possible for SSC programs to be available to all children and families, regardless of means. In the toughest of times, you have invested in the center to ensure that our contribution to the community would persist, regardless of the financial climate. Thank you for your generosity and implicit trust. Wavemakers are members of the Seacoast business community, SSC's sponsors. You not only provide critical financial support for Seacoast Science Center, but you work with us to elevate the message of education and coastal and ocean conservation with your employees and your customers. Thank you for your dedication and for including SSC as a business partner in the community. Wavemakers are partner organizations. Partners make Seco Science Center stronger, better informed, and more relevant. Collaboration is critical for maximizing impact, and collaboration is the foundation of New Hampshire's education and conservation communities. Thank you for being inclusive and for being open to SSC's perspectives and insights. Wavemakers are SSC members, visitors, campers, and students. You are the reason Seco Science Center is here. You define how SSC executes its mission to spark curiosity, enhance understanding, and inspire conservation of our blue planet. Thank you for your energy, your thirst for knowledge, and for looking to SSC for insight and inspiration. Tonight is about thanking you, SSC's Wavemakers. You created Seco Science Center. You guided its evolution. You have invested in Seacoast, New Hampshire by investing in the Seacoast Science Center, and you have made your vision and expectations for environmental education and conservation clear. You were the visionaries in the center's past, critical supporters in our challenging present, and you are vital to the future of the institution. What an amazing tribute. I hope you all feel the same way. I really want to thank the Science Center team that pulled that together. We have thousands of photographs over the years, and I think they did a fabulous job of picking just the right images to convey the value of the wave makers and the role that you've had shaping the Science Center over the years. Before I introduce my next guest, very excited to do that, I want to remind folks of a few things. We do have volunteers standing by at 603-436-8043 to take your, your donations over the phone. Again, we have the auction running, so tune into that and, and bid, bid frequently, bid high. Um, and remember tonight that all of your donations are doubled to $50,000, dollar for dollar, thanks to some very generous uh, as generous neighbors and, and friends here in the seacoast. Speaking of wave makers, it's my honor and privilege to introduce one of Sci the Science Center's original wave makers, Wendy Lull. Wendy was our founding president and my colleague here for, 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 for a lot of years. We'll <laughs> leave it at that. Um, I've asked Wendy to come back to join us tonight because she has a unique perspective on the Science Center. And I'd like her to share that with us a little bit, a couple of questions, and, and see where we're at. But Wendy, thank you for joining us. Oh, Jim, thank, thank you, you for giving me this opportunity. This has been great. Great. And thanks for being a, a sport and, and dealing with the masks <laughs> and the other things that we have to do. But that's just the times that, times that we're living in. 
Hey, I, I have a, a, an important, I think, a, 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 an important question for you. And I'd like you to lean on your perspective to tell us what you think the single most influential element has been to influence the trajectory of the SECO Science Center over the last 28 years. Ah, well, I will say that I think that the clip that we just saw is a good example of that. Because over that 28 years, you can remember that we went through an awful lot of internal and external changes. But throughout all of that time, we always seem to have the right partners and the right people in place for the time. If you remember, our founding partners, the friends of the Odeon Point State Park and the Seco Science Center, Audubon of New Hampshire, UNH, and the New Hampshire State Parks, mm -hmm. all had very different resources to bring into play uh, for our development. And you add to that the leadership of the people we had internally with our board and board chairs and externally throughout the full range of the state and local government. They brought it all together and we were able to grow a community dream into, yes, a community asset today, but now we are a very well-respected science resource throughout the state and the region. I, I am so glad you went back to the founding partners. You have to. Well, you, you have to, <laughs> I, I know. And those partnerships have, have blossomed over the years. They're, they're all in place and stronger and, and more developed and relevant than ever before. I think about the University of New Hampshire and the congressional delegation. Mm. And the synergy of those relationships has given the SECO Science Center access to NOAA, to the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. And from there came opportunities like the Marine Mammal Rescue Program, uh, a suite of different exhibits that we've done over, year, over yeah. the years, and the Greg Interactive Learning Studio. All of those are things that are spawned from that partnership. I think about the governor's office and the agencies, the state legislature and New Hampshire parks, all of whom have been great partners of ours. At this point, I feel that those relationships have evolved to a place where the SECO Science Center is invited into the room for conversations in Concord, for conversations about matters of conservation and education. Great. And those partnerships to me feel like they're, they're stronger than ever. But you mentioned my favorite of the, of the bunch. And that's the friends. Ah. The, the, fri the friends that yep. at a kitchen table in Newcastle started yes. the Seco Science Center. Yes. That's right. Have evolved into 150 volunteers, wow. 1,300 members. That group in 2019 contributed 17,500 volunteer hours <laughs> to the Science Center. That's the equivalent of eight full-time people. I really want to thank them because we wouldn't be anywhere if we didn't have no. them as the base and they have been consistent support in the lifeblood of the Science Center for those 28 years. That's so thankful for that group. Those yes, groups. you couldn't have done it without them. And, and um, also the people we want to thank is I want to thank you, Jim, because, yes, you, because I feel very strongly that you are the right person for this time. You're going to embarrass me. I sure am. <laughs> uh, I, I hope so. And I'm probably one of the, maybe the only person who can get away with this. Um, but you probably know that I was not happy when you left. I understood why, and that's all fine. But I wasn't happy, and I was very happy when you came back. Not only did you learn a lot of really good things when you were gone, but you came back and made my retirement a lot easier. But it's not about my retirement. <laughs> if you talk about a smooth transition of power. So we had, what, 45 minutes in my office. I started to say, well, this is what's in this drawer. This mm -hmm. is it. You knew the people. They knew you. You knew the business. You wrote the chart of accounts, for crying out loud, in the beginning. So you really understood what the Science Center was all about. And the relationships that you had, people who know you, know that you're the right person for this time because you have a deep personal conviction in the power and the importance of our mission. You are the right person for this time 
because in all of the deliberations that we had in times of expansion and times of contraction, you know how difficult some of those discussions were, and we could get through it well because you always faced each one of those with a focus on the future. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, it's gratifying. Um, I, well appreci earned. I appreciate your kind words. I, I do. You know, I, I came back, as you know, because I, I believe in what is possible here at the Seacoast Science Center. And I believe that it's possible for Seacoast New Hampshire. I think there's a need for the style of hands-on environmental education that we offer. And I also think there's space and a place for the Seacoast Science Center to take a role in public advocacy for environmental conservation in the Seacoast. I think that's an important role for us. And as I look into the future, crystal ball-like, in 2021 and beyond, we're going to pursue such things as formalizing the relationships with some of our partners. The University of New Hampshire, the uh, School of Marine Science and Ocean Engineering, Shoals Marine Lab, Sea Grant, uh, and even some partners a little further afield, such as the uh, Gulf of Maine Research Institute. Those, to strengthen those in a formal way gives us access to science and increases the, our relevance in the community. I'm not sure when the school kids are coming back to the Science Center in 2021, but I am sure that we're going to be able to swing our doors open to our visitors. So next year, as we have committed in the past, we're going to really strive to make sure that the visitor experience is top notch. We're going to reinvest in exhibits. We're going to reconsider our interpretation. And I want to make sure that more than just natural history, we bring a conservation message into, mm. the, into the conversation. And honestly, next year, we're going to continue our look at what it would look like for a wholesale update wow. and, and refurbishment of the SECO Science Center. It's a big project. We started looking at that a year or so ago. The pandemic has derailed it somewhat. Yeah. But the need is still there. The community will support it. We'll go out into the community next year and start to gather their thoughts mm -hmm. on what we can look like. And to me, that's a little bit of a glimpse into the future of the SECO mm. Science Center. Yes. And there's not much of it there that talks about the pandemic. I'm just saying. Okay. So we're going we're to keep working right <laughs> through that. I think it'll be pretty exciting. It will be. I Thanks. can't wait to see what happens. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. I hope we can bring you back on stage a little later. We have a celebration I'd like to, I'd like to okay. bring you into. I'll and, be there. And now I'm hoping we can get a look at our thermometer and see where we're at for tonight. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Sure. Oop. There we go. Holy mackerel. I'm going to bring Kate up here to, to help me with our fund and need section in a moment, but 71,455 dollars. Wow. 70, wait a minute, no, no, 71,655. <laughs> I guess you've got to be quicker than I am to get, a, to get away with this. That's amazing. Thank you all so very much. I'm going to turn this over to Kate and she's going to lead us into our fund and need section. Thanks, Jim. This is astounding. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for donating. And thank you for being here. And thank you for supporting us. It's that time of year when we're about to flip the calendar to 2021. I know I cannot wait to flip the calendar and say goodbye to 2020. And I have to say I'm so excited to start looking ahead programmatically to what the next year will bring for Seacoast Science Center. Jim, we're about to jump into fund and need portion of the evening and go through a few of the many, many ways that folks can help support the center in this coming year. Jim is going to take us through some of these needs, but I want to note first that there are many, many ways you can give tonight. You can give online. You can call us at 603-436-8043. We've got volunteers standing by. And as you know, any amount helps, and although We'll be listing some very specific needs here. If you have specific amount you'd like to give or a specific request, please call us at 603-436-8043.
Jim, I'm it, excited to see what we've I, got in I, store I, here. I, I am, I am too. And and a couple, and I and I want to remind folks as we go through these funding needs, they're often written as so much a month, so much a week, so much a child. Well, I want to point out that there's 12 months a year, and there's 52 weeks a year. So we can take as many gifts in any of these brackets <laughs> as you are kind enough to want to advance. I just want to say that. I think Henry said in his video that we had 400 campers. So we have plenty of room to take those camp, uh, campership donations. And it, again, I said it earlier, but if you've seen something that inspires you tonight, and perhaps you weren't planning on $2,500 $2, for, for digital uh, program development, make the donation in any amount that you're comfortable. The last panel on the page is contribute in any amount. But give us a call and let us know that you might like those donations to go to a specific section of the Science Center. We're happy to make sure that you can uh, have your contribution and your inspiration match up. And I've, I've already got um, a list here of some incredibly generous donations. I'm excited to go down through here. We've already Do got one right now from Bobby from Newcastle. Bobby, thank you so much. KK from Rye. Bill and Pam from Stratum. I'm starting to get teary. I know a lot of these names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop there, Jim. I'll let and, you go ahead and introduce some of these levels here as and, we and, go. And these are, these are folks who are, are supporting at, at the program support level, where we're looking, where it cost us about $10,000 a month to support our, our, our program efforts. Um, think about it. I mentioned it earlier. We saw no school programs this year. And in a typical year, that's exactly $120,000 worth of revenue for us. So a dozen of those gifts would cover that. We've had some enormous help already tonight from, from the list there. I think it was Bobby and KK and Pam and Bill. Um, yep. we've, put a, we've put a dent in that, in that shortfall just from their generosity. I think the next thing on our list is Marine Mammal Rescue. And that $5,000 a month covers running our marine mammal rescue program. Ashley, the program manager, is fond of saying she's responded to a thousand seals and has yet to find one that has a visa card. <laughs> um, the, every year, we need to raise sixty to $80,000 to fund that program. We get a little bit from the federal government every year through a competitive grant program, but we need to come up with sixty to $80,000 for that program every year. We generally raise those monies through our, our community events, Sipping for Seals, the Seal Cruise, the Trail Run, all of which, except the Trail Run went virtual this year, but Sipping for Seals and the, the Seal Cruise, we had to suspend due to COVID. So the fundraising for this program is coming down to tonight. So it's really critical that we raise some monies to be able to support marine mammal rescue into the, into the coming year. Yeah, and I, you know, I would just say it's, it, this is the portion of what we do. This is, this is our conservation in action. You know, the education that we do, this is inspiring conservation, exciting our youth and our visitors to, you know, to activate that, that conservation. Um, this piece of our programming, this piece of the Seaco Science Center is wildlife conservation in yes. action. Um, and we do, we've got a, a very generous donation here from Mike and Ann from Northampton. Thank you, Mike and Ann. Thank you, Mike and Ann. Awesome. It's awesome. I love it that folks are coming out to support us tonight. Um, it's so gratifying. We work so hard, and, and to have us recognized as an asset in the community because of your generosity is enormous. I think the next one we have is a $2,500 level. And that'll provide one month of digital programming that'll connect children to nature through digital means in the pandemic. Now with that said, most of our digital programming presents the kids with all kinds of information, but at the end, we're trying to get them back outside into their backyards so that from what they learn from online, they can apply in the safety of their own backyards where they can. You know, our digital programs have been offered free of charge this year because of the support that I mentioned earlier from Bank of America and Merrill Lynch Portsmouth. But these programs are incredibly difficult to monetize. And we tend to do them because it's the right thing to do from a mission perspective. 
And I think that this element, digital element of online education of, of, our, of our school programs is not going to go away anytime soon. The Science Center, in order to be relevant, needs to invest in these areas and we need to, we need to be contemporary and professional, and I, and I know that we are, thanks to you, Kate, in our presentation of these programs. Thanks, Jim. This, this is something that's dear to my heart. This is something that we wouldn't normally have been able to do, and it's been a big pivot for us this year, and it was critical for friend building, for our teachers out there in our community, our families that were adjusting to their new homebound remote learning routines. And this type of um, communication and connection, these touch points were critical. And the fact that we were able to do this and offer these resources was, for free was really huge. So a big thank you to Nancy for supporting us, for Brian and Catherine from Rye. Thank you so much for your generous donations to help us. This is great. I, again, people coming out, thank you so much for all of your support. I'm losing my mask here, so excuse me <laughs> while I readjust it. The next one is kind of fun. It's what people tend to think about when they think about the Science Center. $1,000 to sustain our animals for a week. That's just about what it costs um, to maintain our live animals. It's an enormous amount of effort and food. It's an enormous amount of cleaning and maintenance and, and technical support. Earlier tonight, I came to you from the clownfish tank and our, and our reef tank and our new reef exhibits. Those are things that many of you may not have seen because we closed due to the pandemic shortly after we opened them. Come in and see them. But there's an interesting little backstory to them. And I think Darren alluded to it, but I want to reinforce it. All of the fish in those tanks are cultured. None of them are wild caught. That's not a sustainable way to go. And the other thing that I think is more fascinating is that the coral, all of the living coral in those tanks were grown here on site at the Seco Science Center using the exact same strategies that coral reef restoration experts use in places like Florida and the Caribbean. There was a while where you could open any door, look at any, pull a curtain back here at the Science Center, and all of a sudden you'd see these bubbling tanks and there'd be coral growing in them left and right. Hey, that looks like that could be good news. When somebody, when somebody hands you a card on the same stick that we use to feed the flounder, I'm just saying, it's probably going to be good it news. It is good news. And um, yeah, <laughs> we've got some really nice donations here. Uh, thank you to Carolyn from Newburyport, to Tim from Hampton, Paula from Exeter, Susan from Rye, and Kath, my friend Kath from Hampton. Thank you so much. So Thank great. You. It is so great. Let's, the, the next level we have is, is, a five, is a $500 level. And the $500 level, well, will support a financially disadvantaged child in our summer camp programs. The Seco Science Center tries really hard to keep our programs as affordable as we can. But we know on the other hand, we have to make them so that we can cover our costs on these programs. That said, we want to do everything we can to make sure that we minimize financial barriers to participation. And we've maintained a fund for years in an effort to try and get kids and parents who, who need our services all they need to do is ask, and we'll make sure. Again, again with the. They're still coming I in. I love it. They're still coming in. The Drews from Rye, New Hampshire. Oh, now people are trying to take them away. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take them away. <laughs> Thank you to the Drews. And we've got some amazing, uh, I've got another card here. Um, Rich from Kittery. Sarah and Alan from Newcastle. John from New York. Wow. Bruce from Stratford. And Linda from Sanborn, thank you. I um, speak from the heart here. This Coastal Education Fund is something that's very, very dear to me. And accessibility, as you know, is everything. Um, everything. So thank you. Thank you very much. Now here's one that's kind of a sign of the times a little <laughs> bit. This, this is it, not a 2019 fund in need. This here. is not a 2019 fund in need. This is the additional costs that we have on a weekly basis to address the demands of COVID. It's a real, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult position. 
uh, the pandemic, the reduction in programs, has impacted our revenue profoundly. But on the flip side, the cost to operate has increased so that we can do so safely. Um, well, they're coming in here too. We've got Paul from Rye. Thank you. Catherine from Newcastle. We've got Richard from Hampton. Lori from Hampton. I've it, got, it looks oh. like their penmanship is getting worse as they're getting excited <laughs> know, in the back room. Really, I'm just saying. They're, they're coming in quickly here. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Yeah, just I saying. Get it. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, boy. We have another one here that, that I want to mention. It's $100. We have to support a social service agency membership so they can send their clients and their, their people to, to participate in the SECO Science Center experience. We have a very generous donor who set this fund up on behalf of people in the social services. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to extend their generosity to have more people participate so that we can have more impact and bring more elements of, of our, our social services community here in New Hampshire so they can take advantage of what happens here. It's, imp it's important Absolutely. to get them some exposure to it if we can. Absolutely. And, and I'm just going to say, Jim, I've, we've got so many coming in here now. They're of all different amounts, all different donations. I'm going to read through, and I'm just, you know, my heart is full here. So thank you all. Uh, Sally from Portsmouth. Friend Sally. Oh. Delia from New York. Lauren from Dover. David from Lee. I'm getting goosebumps here. Lori and Richard from Hollis. Deanna from New York City. Wanda from Fort Myers, Florida. Nice. Diana from Dover. Richard from Rhode Island. And Amanda from Fremont. Thank you. Thank you Amazing. very, very much. Thank you so much. At the end of it, any amount counts. <laughs> Uh, I had to look to see what was next. It was a little different than my notes. Anything is, a, is an enormous help. A dollar, five dollars, whatever you can support. And for me, so much is the, so much is the value. It's a vote of confidence in the SECO Science Center. Even if you can afford two dollars and you send it our way, that's an enormous vote of confidence in what we do. I couldn't agree more. We, we strive to be a community anchor for, for the Seacoast, and, and your donations, um, like Jim said, they, they're a vote of confidence. Oh, and oh. Here's, a, here's another one. <laughs> Here comes the clipper again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Linda, thank you. Greg from Newcastle. Matt from Portsmouth. All great. Thank you. Thank you to those very, folks. Very, very kind, very generous. Thank it's, you all. Uh, we're going to keep our, our, our auction open, certainly through tonight. We're thinking of going through the, we're going to have it open through the 20th of November through next Friday. These donations will also be, we're going to keep the web page open through next Friday the 20th. So if you talk to your friends, if you have somebody else that you, you think wants to, to help reach out to support the Science Center, we'll make that available to them and we thank you for it. Like I said, share it with your friends. It's a social media sort of. Um, appeal so you'll have those resources up when this program's over tonight we're going to take bits and pieces of it and I suspect you'll find it on our YouTube channel and elsewhere so you can do your own little virtual fundraiser for your friends it'll be it'll be great fun um, it's going to take us a few more minutes to circle the wagons and sort of count up where we're at with things here um, and in the meantime I'm honored to introduce the last two testimonials that we have um, I'd like, I'm, I'm honored to introduce Senator Jean Shaheen and New Hampshire, uh, New, the director of New Hampshire Division of Parks and Recreation, Phil Bryce. The senator and Phil represent two of our longest standing partners. The, the support we've had from the congressional delegation over time has just been extraordinary. And Parks has been our most consistent partner over the years. And I've got to say that Thanks to relationships with the congressional delegation, Senator Shaheen, senators before her, and New Hampshire Parks, it's a, it gives the Science Center a stable base, a stable base for 2020, 2021, and into the future. So with that, let's hear from Senator Shaheen.
Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you all. The Seacoast Science Center is a cherished institution. Through exhibits and programs, the Science Center shares the wonders of the ocean and provides experiences that visitors will carry with them for a lifetime. I always learn something new when I visit the Science Center. I applaud the Center for persevering during COVID-19. Staff quickly transitioned to online programs and were able to manage a safe and educational summer program that all families could enjoy. Through its research and programs, the Center's calling attention to the threats that climate change and pollution pose to the health of our oceans and to our livelihoods here on land. We all need to heed the warning signs and do everything we can to confront climate change head on and be good stewards of the ocean. This institution is making a difference one visitor at a time and helping to inspire the next generation of oceanographers and marine biologists. Staff also continue to rescue, rehabilitate, and release back into the wild hundreds of precious animals every year. We can't thank you enough for all that you do. Your passion, dedication, and hard work are an inspiration to us all. I'm looking forward to my next visit. The Seco Science Center is an integral part of Odeon Point State Park. The many programs and other experiences they offer add so much to the park. However, the Seco Science Center does so much more. They connect our visitors, especially our children, with the environment in a way that takes full advantage of that special place where the land meets the ocean. We are very fortunate to have such a dedicated and capable organization operating the center, increasing our understanding and commitment to care for not just our parks, but for our planet. Well, thanks everybody. This has been an, an amazing night. I hope you've enjoyed a little of the, of the insight into the Seaco Science Center, and, I'll, and I say that I'm, I'm humbled by your showing of support for us as an asset in the community. I'd like to introduce now one of our board members, Lori Leichheimer. Lori's been with us for several years and, and been a supporter of the Science Center all through it. And I'd like to ask her to toast us out tonight in celebration of this, of this great event. Lori? It'd be my pleasure, Jim. Here's to healthy oceans and children playing in them. Here's to the Seaco Science Center and this extraordinary staff. And most of all, here's to you, our donors. We love you and we thank you. Cheers. Cheers. I, uh, the, the other penalty of the pandemic is that they're so Kind of a thinned out staff here for everybody tonight. Well, pretty soon, we're, it looks like the total on the thermometer is a little over $82,000. That's amazing. We will keep this open for the balance of the week to see if we can scooch up toward that $100,000 goal. I, I hope we can. I think, I think we'll get there. Um, but again, we need to thank you. I desperately want to thank you all for your support tonight. Now, are we going to get some of our wave makers on? We're working on that. I think we've got some, some returns from our wave makers on Instagram. I think we're going to share some of, some of them with you in a moment or two here. Um, but again, thank you to our wave makers that have, that have bid and paid attention to, to, our, to our program here tonight. And I really appreciate that you've shared it with your friends, participated in the social media, and and, and looked out for the Seco Science Center. Thank you so much. Um, watch your emails for a recap of tonight's event. We'll give you the final tally. Again, you can call in at 603-436-8043. You can donate at the website, which is on the bottom of the screen and on the, on the web makers, on the web, web page. Um, don't forget the auction. The auction will remain open for a few days. And ultimately, Thank you. This has been an enormously successful evening. Um, we do this for you. We do this because of you. And let's hope that we put this pandemic behind us and we can have a party next summer at Music by the Sea and we'll all get back together. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.